please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer or reflection as we remember the service women, or men and women who are stationed around the globe that continue to defend our freedom and our way of life every day. And also please remember those who have passed in our community over the past week. Roll call, please. Here. 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 Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third Order, 3A, Minutes of the Scranton-Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority's regular board meeting held January 17, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation received on January 8, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Controller's Report for the month ending January 31st, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held February 27th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, Agenda for the Zoning <coughs> Hearing Board meeting to be held March 13th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I have just two. <clears throat> the Scranton Lackawanna County Taxpayers Meeting will hold their regularly scheduled meeting on March 5th at 6 o'clock p.m. in Scranton Council Chambers, uh, located here in City Hall. Anyone that would like to attend, uh, they're more than welcome to do so. And also, on February 14th, our city clerk, Nancy Craig, attended the legislative breakfast with Senator John Blake. At the breakfast, a small booklet was provided to her, which she distributed to all council members regarding senior programs for older Pennsylvania residents. In this booklet, there's information regarding many programs to help the elderly in our city. The booklet contains information about PACE and PACENET, pharmaceutical assistance, transportation, meals on wheels, motor vehicle registration, as well as hunting and fishing license discounts, as well as property tax and rent rebate information, just to name a few. If you'd like more information on the booklet or um, a copy of any of the information in the booklet, please call Council's office at 348-4113. I'd also like to announce that Councilman Loscombe is not feeling well tonight and will not be in attendance at tonight's meeting. Councilwoman Evans is still uh, suffering from illness and will not be at tonight's meeting. Uh, she, w she did send a message that she would like to thank all those who did send her get well cards as well as flowers. And um, hopefully we could see both council members back next week. Tonight we have a special presentation by the Antique Car Club uh, for Jimmy Clee. And this presentation is going to be given by Mike Passero, who serves, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, as president of the car club. And if you would like to uh, give that presentation, I most certainly welcome you to.
Chief Graziano, um, James Clee and nine of his friends founded the Scranton region of the Antique Automobile Club of America 42 years ago. Their insight, dedication, and love of, the old, of old vehicles has led to the preservation and enjoyment of the automobile history in our area. We are truly honored to have known Jim and worked with him. He was just a, a great individual. Um, on behalf of the Scranton Region Antique Automobile Club of America, its officers, board of directors, past presidents, and the entire membership, we present this memorial plaque to the Scranton Police Department in honor of our friend, James Clay. And we're just <laughs> just uh, very briefly. I'd just like to say that uh, Chief Clee was the chief uh, when I got on the job back in 1992 uh, and 93. And uh, he was not only was he a great police officer, a great, a great police chief, he was a great man. And he was someone that no matter who you were, you can come up to him and talk to him, and he'll give you honest and concise advice. So. Uh, we will hang this proudly in the, the police department uh, in his uh, memory. We're glad to have his family with us. Thank you. This is Craig. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Thank you, Council. I, I was going to Mr. Savile's antique auction tonight and give everybody a, a day off, but when I read this article in the paper uh, 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 about the parking meters, I just became so infuriated, I had to come down here and say something. People told me there was notes left on some of the meters. Nobody did nothing. Half the meter's not working, it's just senseless. We got a hundred dollar an hour man that doesn't do nothing for our money. That's the product of what we're getting for a hundred dollars an hour. This is, this is ludicrous. Then they got the blame game, passing it around, it's so-and-so's fault. You ought to run standard parking off, or just get rid of all these people. This is, you're wasting time and money if you people just had any idea how, how the public is so totally fed up and disgusted, not, I'm not talking about you, with situations like this, one after another, it just doesn't end. Uh, you, you know, the, the, this lousy governor has taken everything he can away from the public. People are paying huge co-pays, they're paying for hospitalization, house insurance has doubled or tripled, everything is expensive. 
It's not just the taxes no more. It's just, it, it's just like homeowners are being just persecuted almost. But, but to, to give somebody $100 an hour was asinine to start with. There's nobody in this city worth anything like that, especially when you don't know what's going on right under your nose. It's time to get rid of people like this that just take our money and we, we don't get nothing back for it. Well, before I explode up here or something, I'll go on. You know, I, I consider it fortunate that there's so many people running for office in the city, but there's only three or four of them ever come to these meetings that show any interest in, in, in our city. The rest of them just, uh, just mouth a bunch of stuff. It, it, it doesn't mean nothing. Uh, to me, if, if you're not interested enough to attend meetings and, and, and be part of this and take time out from your life, you're just not interested in our city like that. Uh, you can't closely monitor what's going on if you, you don't jump in. You're not informed. I, I hope I'm getting my point over. I'm, I'm not against anybody running for office. I'm glad they're doing it. But if, if you just don't show any interest in the city and want to have an office, to me, it's just as simple. You're just not interested in what concerns our city. And lastly, last Thursday's paper, Detroit, which has 700, over 700,000 people and owes a little over two and a half million dollars, is filing for Section 9 bankruptcy. Here we are, they got 10 times as many people. We have less than 40,000 taxable properties left. We owe twice as much as they do. It's just time to realize there's no way in the world you put a pencil to it. There's no way the taxpayers can keep this on their back. It's just time to file bankruptcy. What's 22 years of Pell, they've never come up with one positive suggestion. That shows you, it's just, it's just, the city is just too far in debt. It's just, you can't, it just can't keep going like this. It's, everything is happening, not just with, the, everything is counterproductive. It, it's senseless to just keep on raising taxes and borrowing money. You're throwing good money after bad, year after year. And, and, What's going on at the parking authority ought to show you good money after bad. That's, that's deplorable what's happened down there. Half the meter's not working and nobody doing one thing about it. And I got one, one thing else that I'll get out of your hair. I, I was reading about the, the tax sales. There should be a limit how long you have to fix up your house and put it on the tax rolls. I got a dumpy house down the street from me. The man bought it three years ago. He's used it for a warehouse to store things in. It's not on the tax rolls. He doesn't answer any letters or anything to do anything about it. There should, you should have six months or a year to have that house back on the tax rolls or lose it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Bill Jackowitz. Bill Jackwood, South Scranton resident, member of the Taxpayers Association. Year 22, distressed city. Number one, is it affordable? Number two, is it sustainable? Approximately 75 cents of every dollar is spent on wages, retirement, health care, loans, and bonds. That leaves approximately 25 cents to run the city. Is that affordable or sustainable? I say no. Some people are Democrats, some are Republicans, some are Independents. We have liberals, conservatives, moderates, libertarians, and Tea Party. I consider myself to be a realist, meaning I look at what is really happening. 
The budget is not balanced. The recovery plan is a failure. The city is in debt. Assets must be sold. Parking meters and garages are losing money. Receiver Mike Washell makes $100 an hour. Swimming pools are closed. Five dollars a day to swim at Nayarg Park. More potholes than residents. Population's declining. Taxes going up. Services going down. Parking rates going up. Parking garages run down. Taxpayers still on the hook for bad loans that were made by the parking authority. Sewer authority rates going up. Sewer authority cannot be sold in the near future. I can go on, but my time is limited. One may ask, why is it that nobody is willing to help Scranton? Could the answer be that most people realize that Scranton government insanity will never change and Scranton elected officials like being the victim so that they can put the blame on others and not accept the responsibility, accountability for their voting records and poor decisions that were made in the past and are still continuing? Who made the decision to fight the public service unions and employees? The Mayor, City Council, and the Pennsylvania Economy League, PEL. Who pays for this poor decision? The taxpayers. Who made the decision to give the next mayor a $25,000 pay raise? The Mayor and City Council. Although the city still remains distressed. All around Scranton in the country, people are losing jobs, accepting pay cuts, and having their working hours and benefits reduced. But yet Scranton will give two attorneys a bonus, the newly elected mayor a $25,000 $25, pay raise, but yet the city remains distressed, and then ask the community, Scranton taxpayers, visitors, and shoppers downtown to pay for these bonuses and raises. It makes me wonder, do we really have a financial problem in the city? I'm not sure. How many new people have announced their candidacy for mayor since the pay raise was announced? One, Gary Lewis. The new government, the old, the new generation, the old generation, nothing will change in Scranton until the taxpayers and voters realize that change must be made in city government, starting with reduction in the biweekly payroll and retirement and health care benefits. Scranton pop population, approximately 72,000 residents. Scranton taxpayers, approximately 35,000. Scranton median family income, approximately $36,000. Highest unemployment in the state, highest percentage of taxes paid in the area, including wage tax at 3.4%. Three tax increases in the last five years. We can blame the nonprofits, Times Tribune, Honorable Mayor Doherty, Councilwoman Evans, Parking Authority, Sewer Authority, and anybody else. The real story is this mess has been brewing for decades. I can go back to Mayor Hanlon's administration and blame each mayor and city councilman and woman for helping to create the fi this financial mess. The financial house of cards has been, ha has been being built for decades and now in, in the year 2013 it has finally collapsed. And nobody has a clue on how to solve the mess except raise taxes, borrow more money, and to continue to pay wages that the taxpayers can now, no longer afford. Afford. Mr. Rogan, can we afford to survive on 25 cents out of every dollar, yes or no? No. Mr. Joyce, can we afford, can, can we continue to survive on 25 cents on every dollar that we bring in, yes or no? It would be very difficult. Mr. McGough, same question. Can we afford to run this city on 25 cents on every dollar? We're going to have to try. Okay. So that doesn't sound very positive, and you people are our elected leaders. We have seven elected leaders in the city of Scranton. We have a mayor, which we have a strong mayor form of government. We have five councilmen, and we have a city controller. All seven of you have responsibilities to deal with our finances. We the people put our trust and our faith in our elected officials. And right now, we're hanging over the cliff. And we're about ready to fall over this cliff because we have no money. We have to admit the fact that we have no money. But yet, you're going to go out and give a mayor of a distressed city a $25,000 pay increase, hoping to get a better qualified candidate? Why don't we get the candidate first, have that person, he or she, elected, and see if they get us out of, a dis out of the distressed city status before we give that person a pay raise? That would be the common sense way and the right approach to approach this matter. But no. We go ahead and give the raise first, and then we give raises to attorneys who make enough money as it goes right now, 
and yet we're going to scream poverty? I have a hard time believing that the city is broke. I think we have excess money, otherwise we wouldn't be giving these raises out. Thank you, Mr. Jack Woods. Our next speaker is, if, and I'm sorry if I get the name wrong, E. McNichols? Okay. And I'm having trouble reading the next name. I think it's A. Forschel? Okay. And our next speaker is E. Engels. No? Our next speaker is Ozzy Quinn. Good evening. Good evening. Ozzy Quinn, Scranton Taxpayers Association. Uh, I want to start off by saying that, uh, give a commercial that the Scranton Lackawanna County Taxpayers Association will meet on Tuesday, as Mr. Joyce announced, uh, March 5th, that's next Tuesday, 6 p.m., and Representative Kevin Haggerty of District 112 uh, state representative will be uh, the uh, guest speaker so everyone's invited to attend or if you're out there it's going to be live on EO on, uh, on ET, ECT TV uh, channel 19 so uh, I hope you can attend or come down and watch it uh, I just want to say that uh, you know the last, the last few months sort of makes me sick. For 10 years, I, 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 I've been coming around here and, you know, everybody was praising that Mayor Doherty, the infamous Mayor Mayor Doherty, King Doherty. The Scranton Times, they put on him on a pedestal for, for building the, uh, the, the uh, Southern Union building, the, uh, the 500 Lackawanna Avenue, uh, Davis Trail. Oh, he was doing wonders, you know? And now the, the, the city is crumbling with the debt that he could not handle, that he just borrowed and borrowed and borrowed year after year using one credit card to pay off another credit card, and he couldn't do it. And we complained and we complained, and now here we are. And yet the Scranton Times now, all they do is print complaints, negative stuff against Mr. Rogan, Mrs. Evans, Mr. Joyce and Mr. Glasgow. That's all they print is the negative stuff about the parking, about the uh, finding money in the sewers and whatnot, okay? And the only thing is that you're trying to get this back into a situation where it's a viable city. And I understand that. But the Scranton Times wants to kill you people and they are trying to do it. You know. They're so corrupt, it's unbelievable over there because of the fact that they have been sponsoring, since Mr. Doherty took office in 2002, right? 2002 and 2013, almost 25, 28 campaign finance you have to submit, you know? The publishers have, they all have supported Mayor Doherty financially. They support him financially, and they write about this man, all right? It, it, it just can't be done. It just can't be done. It's corruption. It's corruption. I see, I, in, in here, on page 59, I see the solicitor who was appointed by Mayor Doherty, and no, no squawks by the Scranton Times, who is who is the solicitor for the OECD and the SRA. He made about a million dollars easily here. I see here, he contributed $4,000 to the Mayor Doherty's campaign that year. Mayor Doherty, Mayor Doherty spent almost $900,000, over $900,000 that year to, to, to be, uh, be elected. You know, and it keeps on coming and coming and coming. And the people, don't be so gullible and listen and think that these people here are responsible for the city. It's because of the Scranton Times, stand in the back, 
and praising Mr. Doherty, and Mr. Doherty spending that money and spending that money, and the former councils letting them go ahead and do it, okay? And I, I feel, really feel sorry when they have a character of Mrs. Evans in the paper, and here's a woman who's been sick for a month now with pneumonia, okay? And they have a character in the, in the paper of her today. Ah, that's, that's sad, okay? So basically what I'm, what I'm trying to do is try to clarify what's going on here. It's pathetic, you know? I want to point out a couple of complaints. One thing is that uh, I come down North Washington Avenue in front of Cooper's restaurant by the parking lot there. You know, I think the last run for the Greenwich Suburban was in 1954, the streetcar. You can see the rail, you can see the streetcar tracks. The streetcar tracks. That, and that just didn't happen. That's, I, it's been a year I, I complained about that. Streetcar tracks in, 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 in downtown Scranton. It, it's unbelievable, you know? Uh, another th thing is the mayor, salary, you know, you say raise his salary. I say raise his salary if he does something good. Every year he should be looked at and evaluated just like everybody else. Never mind just saying give him seventy five, seven thousand, eighty thousand dollars Evaluate it. Because we have one doozer in here for the last 10 years. And he earned 50000 He should earn 20000 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Andy Spragley, Citizens Grant and Fellows Grantonians. I supported that mayor's increase. You got to get people in here that can live off the salary of the, of the city. I don't want to have a mayor up there that runs another business down the line somewhere. I want a full-time mayor. We're paying for a full-time mayor. We should get a full-time mayor. And the only way you can get that is to pay him a salary that he can live on. Now, I won't use singular anymore. I'll use plural, man or woman, that may be mayor. Being that, I was pointed that out. But look at the, look at the, the walls around here. When you go by past president, you can see why I would use male instead of female. But anyway, if we get a female mayor, I'll be happy. If we get a male mayor, whatever the mayor would be, as long as they're doing what they're supposed to do. The paper prints a lot of bad news. No question about the parking authority. We all know that's bad. But when Dunmore started balking on the sewer authority, that's a bigger problem. We all know what the parking authority is. But if we can't sell the sewer authority, then we have to look toward park gardens. That's the only things we got that we could actually sell. And uh, like I say, with the sewer authority, Dunmore is dragging their heels. They may not go with it. But we don't have to. Park gardens is a good piece of property, too. And it won't affect the rates anytime soon because, like I said, it's a private development that we own. But somewhere along the line, we got to come to realize what's happening. There's no doubt that we're in financial straits, and we're deep financial straits. Now, we have to go and out to borrow, what they say, $25 million this year, pay off some of the debts we owe with the firemen, police, and, and pension, I think, wasn't it? I think that was the three yes. things they said. But when we go to borrow that, I wish we could just say we're borrowing $25 million, but unfortunately we're not. Anytime you borrow money like that, you got interest. God knows the, where it's going to end up. But it's, I usually double it and say we're going to borrow $50 million instead of $25 million, and you're probably going to be in the ballpark. But we don't, can't afford that anymore. That's the problem. We hit the point where we're at the low point in the city. We are really in dire straits. And nobody seems to be able to come with it other than sell an asset. And even if we do sell the asset, there's no way that's going to solve the problem. It's going to give us money to spend, give us breathing room. But we're still going to have to be saddled with a lot of debt. And to go forward, we're going to have to pay that debt. You and I know that the budget is going to be 
Well, M Mr. Goff, he said it was going to be about seven and a half million in the in the red in the paper, and I believe his, I believe what he said. I believe we're going to be about seven and a half million at least in the red this year. That means you're going to have to go before that judge again, and it's not going to go good. The more we go before that judge and said you can't keep your house in order, the more trouble we get into. The banking community probably doesn't want much to do with us at all. And them loans we're getting at 8.9% isn't exactly the best, considering the bank is only paying around 2% on your savings. Somewhere along the line, you gotta come up with a, a better plan. Like I told you four years ago, well, actually three years ago, three and a half maybe, when you first stood up there, you're going to have to do a lot, a lot of planning because we were in debt then and we weren't going to get out of it. Anybody that was able to add one and one and get two knew it. But the fa I cannot see faulting the mayor's salary as an impediment to the city getting somewhere. True, it's, a, it's money. But by not spending that money, look where we got. If we had to spend that money in the very beginning, we probably wouldn't be in the mess we're in now. There would have been more people that would step up. Scranton has a lot of millionaires, a lot of them, that really tried to help the area. Some of them worked out, some of them didn't. But Mr. Nardelli was there, Mr. Karam was there. They tried to help. They grew up, well, Nardelli and Old Forge, but Karam grew up in the city. And he tried to help the city. And I think there's a lot of other millionaires out there that probably would help the city if you can get to them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. Marie Schumacher, city resident. Good evening. Uh, before I decide what I want to do tonight uh, would you tell me are you going to take uh, the previously tabled items on the standard agreement and the f a revision of file uh, of council 100 of 2009 off the table tonight no we're not can you explain why I mean a month ago that was a an emergency there was emergency legislation you know another one of those wonderful emergency certificates attached so that it could have been gone through in, in essentially in three readings in one night if you so chose as and now all of a sudden it, it's not it's no longer an emergency and you know we're two months into the year whatever you do is going to take time to execute we're not going to see very much income from it if it keeps going on and on well there's been a lot of disagreement uh, about these two pieces of legislation amongst council members and two um, a majority of council members I believe would like to see it put out to bid as that would be the proper process okay and what about file of, of council 100 of 2009 did you check as are there any any standard rules or any study that's on on the placement of parking meters or will there be a public hearing so people can input? <clears throat> I'm not sure if and when a public hearing would be scheduled. But there would be one? I'm not 100% sure at okay. this point. I, as I said, I, I really think that would, you know, allowing people some input. First, get telling people what the ground rules are for a, for a parking meter being placed in a location. I think you owe us that. And then once we know the ground rules, we can review the legislation and see where we think changes are, are made. I gave one example last week. Um, and did anybody check to see uh, or request that a check be made with IPS to see if they would uh, lease us those parking meter heads, that, those 750? I personally do not know, but uh, Mrs. Craig, if we could send a request back to Business Administrator Ryan McGowan to um, inquire with IPS if 
they in fact could lease us the 750 parking meter heads I'd greatly appreciate it I, I will do that absolutely councilman Joyce however I do know that that was a bid and they bid as per the specs that were issued so I'm I don't know if mrs. Schumacher is asking for it to be rebid well the um the agreement with IPS is the, the bid was sent directly to Standard Parking. It was not sent to the city of Scranton, and which I would think it would have been if it's in the package. It's in the package. Look, anyway, um, I think that that certainly needs to be looked into. Um, and then moving on, and again, certainly on the parking meter thing. Uh, uh, Mr. McGough, how many rental registration, how many properties, rental properties have been registered to date, uh, our last you checked? I can't give you an update. I've asked Mr. Seitzinger if I could get a monthly report. Yeah. Uh, I have not received that as of yet. Uh, when I do, I will certainly convey it to you. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to that starting. And I don't know if you're aware, if you've ever gone to the uh, SSA website, to see what they have on there because they do get affidavits on on rental properties and I would think I know you said they were not willing to share with uh, with the persons uh, the people in the lips group but perhaps they could write to know uh, for the the affidavits and get the information that way um, did they ever go do you know if they ever went to the county and asked for all of the the list of all the the properties that where the bill went to someplace other than the address of the property I know they have a list of out-of-town landlords that they were doing <coughs> it that okay. uh, they were going to do a mass mailing to them I don't know where they obtain those names okay okay maybe by next week hopefully <laughs> one more call um, and then uh, how many how many of the uh, entities that receive the parking fee tax notice have responded to date I will research that situation and get an answer for you hopefully by next week okay that that would be nice now as to the the sale leaseback property that we're looking at what's the status of of that Because don't we, aren't we coming up on a critical one year when the interest rate goes up on that court award? Yes. Um, I will also uh, inquire about the status of that as well. Okay. And uh, when can we expect uh, Mr. Washoe to attend a caucus and explain? Now, I, I understand that he does not currently have anything to do with the parking meters, but there continue to be complaints about the the about the garages and and if you did anybody go back and read the <clears throat> rich report this last week yes I, I actually looked at some of it and uh, mrs. Craig I, I believe we we're discussing before the meeting that mr. Washoe would be a, available to come in for a caucus in two weeks from now so okay we'll, have him well I would yeah I would certainly hope that you all would would read the rich report before then and uh, and have the answers on all that maintenance and the status of the garages uh, considering that they're underwater so so badly and that could fall back on us and sink us thank you for your time thank you good evening council Dave Dobson resident of Scranton taxes paid today um, okay now on these meters there I understand are being managed by a corporation right now they're under corporate management yeah yes it's on a okay. month to month basis and they let the batteries go for the how the long former employees of the SPA are now being managed uh, by uh, standard parking mm -hmm. it's not their fault it's the executive's fault I, I blame the corporation that's managing them uh, to have dead batteries that's I was down two weeks ago I parked in front of Guild Studios and there were both meters were dead I just didn't get enough time up here to mention it I forgot uh, 
Okay, we had a few accidents downtown, and uh, I noticed, if anything, they're probably where it's okay to turn when the walk light is on. We need the state to come in and put left and right hand turn signals depending on whether they're one way or whatever. But that's what I feel is the cause of the problem because I've had to dodge cars myself right out at this very corner here, Washington and, uh, and uh, Mulberry. And once again, I'd like to call for a commission to study tax exempts, how many are too many, and we really need somebody and some sound legal advice because it's time to start taking this on. I'm tired of paying everybody else's bill around this county. Uh, I appreciate the hospitals and so forth. The school's okay, but uh, there and again, it's society's problem and they're dumping on us. And uh, a constitutional amendment to uh, shove them down our throat is not the answer as far as Mr. Blake is concerned. Uh, once again, also, we need inspections on the street excavations because we have freshly paved streets that are just being torn up and destroyed. Uh, also, we really need to consider a term limit for mayor. Uh, they run out of ideas and get a few too many friends, and that's just the way it is. Uh, now, <coughs> on it, federal income tax, uh, the bottom end has been changed so much don't expect people to be able to pay their taxes without taking money out of their pocket, their property taxes and so forth. A lot of this stuff has been rendered non-deductible uh, or you don't hit the threshold and so your property taxes and so forth aren't. That's not your fault. It's uh, the federal government's fault. They have no heart for anybody that uh, lives within their means and pays taxes based on a house that they're living within their means. And uh, it would be interesting to know why the commissioners did not work with you people on the medical issue, medical insurance. I, I think that's just terrible that uh, these <laughs> people aren't finding ways to uh, make things better for everybody and pay out. I mean, what, what is the beef? If you get an insurance pool, uh, naturally you're going to get better, a better deal and you have more negotiating power. I don't understand that. Now, they refused from the last time I heard from uh, Janet Evans, they refused to go along with it and I'd like to know why. So without having to go through a, a frisking and a strip tease down in the middle of uh, uh, Adams Avenue there where they hold their meetings. That's uh, correct. Um, by the time, by the time I got through the security check, the meeting was over the last time I went. You know, it's, it's just like, well, how convenient. And, and it's really egregious that they won't study into medical issues on medical insurance with considering what we pay. And, uh, Okay, uh, through the fire engine, I'd like to remind the citizen, fine citizens of Throop that it was one of their citizens that challenged our commuter tax. So thanks a lot, and for their reward, we're gonna lend them a fire engine for God knows how long. And uh, once again, PA is the second in loss in income over outsourcing to foreign countries. So call your representatives and tell them to take their trade pact and stuff it. And uh, once again, I'll give a, a golden parrot to uh, Antonin Scalia, our Supreme Court Justice. He called the Voter Rights Act uh, uh, a racial entitlement. Well, <laughs> uh, to me, it's a privilege, it's a right, and it's a duty. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you.
Is there anyone else who wishes to address council? Good evening, council. Good evening. Um, the first thing I have tonight is that I'd like to thank Dunmore for standing up and saying no to sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority. I think it's time to stop selling assets completely. I don't agree with selling one single thing or leasing back one single thing. Um, I think we have one very serious problem in this city. And I don't blame the Scranton Times for that. I blame the residents. The residents had an obligation to pick a leader. Um, they've done really a terrible job at that for a very long time. Probably all of my life. I mean, how you take a city of 130,000 people and shrink it down to the point where it is now? It's just ridiculous. Um, you just watch as all these things have taken place. And now, well, I'd have to say that I think that maybe as much as 10 or 15 percent of the houses in this city are abandoned. There's nobody living in them. Um, you know, it makes you wonder, because when you look at all these mayors on the wall, and look, I've been a Teamster, and I've negotiated a Teamster contract over the head of the local 229 and over the shop steward where I worked. But my question is really simple. And you know, I have a lot of respect for the employees of the city, whether they're unionized or not. But I'm just wondering, have the lead labor leaders of the unions in the city supported candidates because they wanted something? And in the end, they elected these people and these people kept giving and giving and giving and giving. You know, there's nothing wrong with the employees, but I have a problem when somebody who may be a labor leader decides to move their candidate forward at the detriment to the residents. And me personally, I believe it's happened here. And I believe it'll continue to happen. And you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see the city employees make a decision to change their union leadership. Because the city employees, a city without residents doesn't have employees. And it's time to realize one thing. This battle between the mayor and labor, that didn't spin from here. That spun from Harrisburg, because Harrisburg wanted to use the distressed status to smash municipal unions. That's my opinion. The only thing is, the taxpayers in Scranton are going to pay for it all. And you know, when you take a look at the protracted battles we've had, it hasn't helped any of us. But in the end, we've continued to shrink the labor base the city of Scranton has. And at this point, from watching the hearing with the judges, there's nothing left. And if I was a city employee, I'd be really scared. Because if we keep electing people that we can control in the mayor's office, we're going to have problems. Now this mayor, he wasn't controllable. And my point on that is this, that yes, yeah, sending the Scranton Parking Authority over the side, that was a beautiful thing if you were a union member because you got rid of the mayor. But the harm that was done to the residents of this city and its borrowing abilities and its ability to finance itself, you know, you can blame Mr. Wasso for what's happened. You blamed Mr. Scopoletti and all he got was a little stifling for fuel. Okay, and we can keep coming up with all these excuses. But in the end, this city needs to elect a leader, not only here, but in Harrisburg, in Washington. And we just, we're a country that's leaderless. We're the most powerful country in the world. We can smash any army at any time without even being provoked. But we can't seem to pick leaders to lead our country. Leaders, I don't know, you'd have to take a look at some. Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, even ones before them, Lincoln real leaders. But now, money's taken the place of leadership. Mr. DeBilio spent $450,000 to be, want to become mayor for a $50,000 a year job. And Mr. Doherty spent, according to the Scranton Times figures, $933,000 to be the mayor of a town that paid $50,000. I would have just took that money and put it in the bank and retired. So I mean, that's our real problem. And you know something? 
Filing bankruptcy is just a formality because we are bankrupt. And I wouldn't want to be in your seat because I don't know how you walk around in public considering the situation and the stance this council's taken against the Scranton Abington Planning Association's comprehensive plan, but no plan, no development. Think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? I'm sorry, Mr. Evans, I have to stop you before you speak. Uh, I, I know that you're a candidate for city council, and I would just ask you to remove your or your campaign Absolutely. button while speaking. That's I apologize. Just, just to be fair to all the other candidates who are understand 100. percent Thanks, Frank. No problem, Mr. Joyce. <laughs> um, good evening, Gregory Evans, um, Scranton resident, Scranton small business owner. Um, I'm here to um, readdress the nonprofit situation with. Um, as I asked back in January if the, the city ever utilized the expertise of the Department of Economics of any of the universities, the response was um, perhaps there were two interns that were utilized in the uh, administration office. And I would like to um, suggest to council or the city or whomever within the government to um, call upon these universities and politely, of course, and request perhaps maybe a, a council of the departments of economics of the Scranton-based universities. I think this would um, really aid in, the, in the, uh, the process of figuring out what to do with, the, with, with a recovery plan and with balancing a budget. As we know, we've, had, we've struggled to balance a, a, um, the budget with real numbers and to follow a recovery plan that will actually work. So. I would like to call upon perhaps the, the Mer Merwood University, University of Scranton, even Lackawanna College, all Scranton-based universities to not necessarily, you know, give a pilot in terms of money, but their expertise instead. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Hi, Chrissy. Hey, Chrissy. Next has a big point next to Frankie on the next week. You know that, don't you? I'll be there. You guys be there too. All of us. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else care to address council? Good evening, Council. Joseph Archer, uh, resident. I have a question. We know any time that West Lackawanna Bridge is going to be done completely. Mrs. Craig, do we have any updates on that? No, we don't. Can we find out when, approximately? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if you'd be able to send that request in, I'd greatly appreciate it. And another thing. We have uh, stop signs down on Franklin Avenue. Why did they take the traffic lights away? We know. I wouldn't be sure. I'm not 100% sure why they took the traffic lights away. Um, I know that when they remove stop signs or, tra or insert traffic lights or vice versa, there's a traffic study that has to be done. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if we could please send that request to the DPW to inquire why that was done. And, and what would be the exact address? It's, uh, I don't know the correct address, but I know it's down there right where Northeast I is. Franklin and, and the other? Franklin and Spruce, I think it is. Okay. That's all I got tonight, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Mrs. Craig? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. McGough, do you have any que or, uh, questions, <laughs> comments, or motions? I got questions too, but uh, um, first on the parking, uh, one of the things is we keep talking about the meters. Uh, the meters are owned by the city, and Standard Parking or any other company is not going to invest money in those meters if they don't have a contract. Uh, we've tabled the management contract, and I, 
unless the city itself were going to spend the money to um, enhance those meters, whether it's by renovating them or batteries or whatever it is that needs to fix, um, it's not going to be done by some other entity. A and so the likelihood of those remaining um, non-workable, the ones that are non-workable, <coughs> is probably likely for the near future um, until there is a management company in place that will, or somebody to manage the parking meter um, program. It is my understanding that the administration is in the process of drafting an RFP for a, a management contract uh, for, or company for the to run the meters since it was not done pro previously. Hopefully that RFP is completed very quickly, that it is put out to bid, that we do have some people um, bid on that um, management uh, portion of the uh, meter program and that we can put someone in place and I think at that point in time it then becomes our responsibility to give them a guideline for for operation so, th which is the second piece of legislation that is tabled that's our responsibility to set the hours days rates for the meters and then let someone else manage it um, hopefully that's going to take place in the relatively near future or the speakers are right, we are going to continually lose money um, that is part of, that we put in as part of the um, budget um, for 2013. Uh, one, another thing that came up uh, and, and it's been spoken of by, by people here at council and it has to do with very concerned with the signals and crosswalks in the city of Scranton, especially in the downtown area. Uh, I, I happened to be walking through through the downtown today just to for a number of reasons, but one of the things I wanted to do is to to look at how they operate. And one of the one of the areas that I that I watched the lights and the the crosswalks was at the where Wyoming Avenue meets Lackawanna Avenue at right at the mall. If you're crossing Lackawanna Avenue, if you follow this, the crosswalk sign, when it lights and says walk, at the very same time that you're allowed to walk, it's a green light on Wyoming Avenue and cars can turn either way onto Lackawanna Avenue which means that you have people crossing the street at the same time drivers are assuming that they have the right of way. I think that that is just a very dangerous situation. Uh, and, and that is not the only intersection where that takes place. Um, throughout the downtown, that seems to be the norm. Um, I, I think that something should be done to look into that situation and to see if it can be rectified. Uh, in the past, I've said what I would like to see at any of those intersections is for all of the lights to go red for a short period of time, 15 seconds or whatever, to allow people to cross when there is no traffic going in any direction. I think that that, and I didn't walk up there to observe today, but I think at the corner of Jefferson and Linden at the University of Scranton, that does happen, that everything goes red, there's a certain period of time for people to cross whatever way they want to go, and, and then whatever appropriate light does turn green to allow traffic to go. That, that seems to be a more workable um, idea rather than endangering people you know, in these crosswalks. Uh, I, I just think it's something that we really have to look at as we move forward and as, as the development of the downtown takes place, I, I think that that 
it, it is a very necessary item. And um, I'm not sure where we go to do that, um, but certainly it's good. I think we should look into it, and I will personally look into it and um, see what we can do as far as this, uh, the signals in the crosswalks are concerned. And one last thing, uh, we've been talking about amending the rental registration ordinance. Um, I know Ms. Schumacher had brought up the, the, a phrase within the rental registration that gave a very great leeway to inspectors. Um, and I made a request to the legal department if they would do um, legislation or write up a piece of legislation to have that phrase delete it. They have requested of us that we send a letter to them to um, okay that or to ask them to prepare that. So at this point in time, I'd like to make a motion um, to request a letter sent to the legal department to draft legislation to amend the rental regis registration ordinance by deleting the phrase but not limited to from the safety inspection definition. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And, and thank you. And uh, if we, Mrs. Craig, I, uh, not my province to do that, but if we would send a letter to legal departments uh, stating that, I would be very pleased. Thank you very much, and that's all. You're welcome. Mr. Rogan, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Um, I actually want to speak a little bit about pedestrian safety myself, and um, with that in mind, please remember to keep in your prayers the victims of recent accidents in the downtown and the drivers as well. Um, and as Mr. McGough said, it, it is a very dangerous situation in the downtown if you follow, you know, what, what the, whether it says walk or don't walk, and it's, it's very difficult to get across the downtown streets. Um, one thing I, I think that can be done, and, and I don't know, I, I know PennDOT's been involved with signalization downtown. Um, I'm going to request that we send a letter to PennDOT asking that they do a study to review the safety of the signalization in the downtown um, for pedestrians and drivers as well. Um, when walking in the downtown, I think any of us have had many close calls um, to being struck by a vehicle and you know, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous situation. Also, and Mr. McGuff brought this up as well, residents have brought up to me um, on Mulberry Street by the University of Scranton when class is in session. Um, it's, you know, there's a lot of students crossing the road on both sides and one thing I think that might be necessary there is a covered pedestrian bridge. Now, I, I don't think that's something the city should have to f foot the bill for. I think the University of Scranton uh, <coughs> should be willing to, to assist on that. Um, obviously, I asked for a covered bridge that way. Things can't be thrown off as they were in, in some other areas. But a, a lot of people have reported that to me, that by driving up and down Mulberry Street when school is in session, it's very difficult for, for cars to commute because of the large amount of students crossing that road. And not everyone's following the traffic laws in that area as well. So hopefully, that's something that, that can be um, can be looked at and, and to make it safer for, for drivers and pedestrians as well. Um, next, as I stated last week, um, I do have the uh, economic development loan portfolio from OECD. Last week I went through the list of loans that were fully satisfied. Um, this week I will go through the uh, companies that have open loans with the city. Now open is a bit vague. Um, it doesn't state that they are open and paid up to date. They may be delinquent. They may be ahead of payments. Um, but they are not in litigation, so they still are open loans, and, and this is the list. 321 Development Corporation, Alexander Salon and Spa, Across the Pond, DNS Auto Sales, Denise's Salon LLC, DTK Ventures, Electric City Roasting, John Signs, Kenmark, MTM Real Estate LLC, WM Fox National Pastry Bake Shop, Ed and Chris Pisano Partnership, 
Salon Bringe. Scranton Downtown LLC, Woolworth Corp, Learn and, Gr Learn and Grow Child Center, DML Properties LP, Fratelli's Pasta and Pizza House, 500 Lackawanna Development Corp, Freckles and Frills Inc, 520 Madison Associates, F&M Restaurant, Yanni's Greek Bistro, Local Focal Inc., Posh Life LLC, DMS City Cafe, Fratelli's Pizza House again, Carl Von Luger LLC, Connell TC Inc., and United Neighborhood Center Development Corp. As I stated next week, I will go through the list of delinquencies that are currently in litigation. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, those do total um, over one mil or over two million dollars in taxpayer funds that were loaned out that the companies have either gone bankrupt or, or for some reason are in litigation with the city. And finally, just two um, citizens' requests this week. Um, one, can we send a letter to the DPW requesting that potholes at the end of North Washington near DNS Auto and the railroad tracks are repaired? Um, I had a couple of residents bring this up to me and I drove over there myself and uh, it is for somebody who drives a, a small car it's very difficult to even get over those railroad tracks um, with all the potholes and also um, on six, the 300 block of 16th Street in West, West Scranton um, this block was recently paved um, the residents stated that they did a nice job paving it but um, there is a crack that's forming that um, they would like tar it before it would become a bigger problem. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rogan. <clears throat> to report tonight, meter revenue in January of 2013 was $67,942. During January of 2012, meter revenue was $76,665. In the Scranton Times on Tuesday, there was an article attributing a drop in meter collections to dead batteries. It is logical for one to think that if the meter is not working, people aren't going to put money in it. I must say that when reading the article, I was appalled to learn that there were 600 meters with dead batteries, which constitute over half of the parking meters that Scranton owns is unacceptable. How can the city expect to generate revenue from parking meters if the parking meters are not even in operation? This is just simply atrocious. Personally, I wonder if this problem was fixed by the start of February, or could the city expect another month with decreased meter revenue? The city can simply not afford to have dead parking meters generating no revenue. We are, all are, uh, we are already behind because of the dead battery situation, and now we have to make sure that this problem gets solved. With this in mind, Mrs. Craig, please send letters to Standard Parking as well as our business administrator, Ryan McGowan, and copy Mr. Washoe as well, and ask the following questions. One, who is responsible to ensure that the parking meters are working at all times? Two, if and when the batteries in the 600 dead meters were replaced? Three, how will the issue of dead batteries and meters be handled going forward? And four, I see that there was a budget transfer on February 26th to cover costs to Duncan Parking Technologies. Please describe what the bill from Duncan Te Parking Technologies was for. And please only include that in the letter to Mr. McGowan as he would be the one that would be able to um, know that information, I'm assuming. Also to report tonight, the RFPs for insurance coverage was opened on Tuesday, February 26th. Knowles Insurance was the only agency that submitted a proposal, as they were the only insurance agency that submitted a proposal last year as well. The total for premiums and fees that will be due from the city, excluding compensation paid to Knowles Associates, is $746,043. 
Included in the $746,043 figure is property, equipment breakdown, equipment floater and EDP crime, as well as general liability protection, which constitutes $226,936 of the annual premium. Commercial automobile coverage, which constitutes $121,623 of the annual premium. Law enforcement liability, which constitutes $98,753 of the annual premium. Public official and employment practices coverage, which constitutes $124,887 of the annual premium and excess workers' compensation coverage, which constitutes $191,094 of the annual premium. Also included in the price is $750 in fees. Since the bid excludes compensation paid to Knowles Associates, I'm curious to know what compensation will be paid to Knowles. With this in mind, uh, Mrs. Craig, please contact Ryan McGowan, our BA, and inquire what fees will be paid to Knowles Associates if they are chosen. To report, Scranton City Council has received an update from Northeast Revenue, who currently is conducting tax searches on properties. As one may or may not know, the city is requiring a charge for a delinquent tax and or refuse search fee on a prospective property that may be sold this year. Revenue that was generated from these fees in January amounts to $6,450. And over the past week, I've received various complaints regarding the property at 1406 West Gibson Street. Residents have informed me that the property is in serious need of being torn down. Odors are emerging from the property that smell like ammonia. There's a tree that has fallen into the house and before it was condemned, it was the host to violence and gang activity. Residents do not want to see this property reopened as they fear it'll host more of the same. The residents have circulated a petition with 100 signatures, or over 100 signatures actually, to have the property torn down. In addition, there's a record of 27 police calls that were made to the property. This nuisance home this is a nuisance home, rather. And it was previously owned by a slumlord living out of town who, according to residents, lost the house, which is now owned by the bank. Mr. Hughes, um, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. What could be done to see that this property is torn down? Residents don't want this property in their neighborhood anymore as, as it's been condemned for quite some time spanning at least two or three years, and furthermore, this property is a constant nuisance in their neighborhood. This would have to go to lips to Mr. Seitzinger. Okay. Uh, I think he controls the demolition list, um, and he would have to put that property on the list to be bid to be demolished. So I believe that you should have Mrs. Craig write a letter to Mr. Seitzinger, you know, regarding that property, the address and everything. And if it's been condemned by the city, uh, is unfit for, unfit for human habitation, uh, when would it be put on to the demolition list to be demolished? Okay. Mrs. Craig, uh, if you could please forward a copy of the residents' concerns that I just mentioned to Mr. Seitzinger and ask him if this property, in fact, could be demolished. <clears throat> and I'm not sure, Mrs. Craig, if you uh, copy down the request from uh, Mr. Archer uh, during citizens' participation, but I'd also just like to remind um, if we could send a request to uh, Mr. McGowan asking how many of the parking tax fee recipients have been have been uh, responsive so far as um, Mrs. Schumacher requested. And if we could also send a letter to the uh, county commissioners uh, as per Mr. Dobson's request asking why they aren't interested in a health care consortium. And that's all I have for tonight. 
I would kindly like to uh, request Mr. Joyce that the um, people that ask questions submit them in writing to our office so that way we are able to construct letters of much professional nature. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll remind them of that next time. And um, for those who did make requests during citizens participation, if you're still in the audience or if you're now watching at home, if you could submit requests in writing via email to our office, that would be greatly appreciated. Mrs. If Craig? I could, Mr. Joyce. Okay. Uh, you know, questions have come up regarding the parking meter and it's, it's tabled um, and what has happened when, and I think everybody sh has to understand the fact that council does not negotiate contracts. That's, that's not a legislative function. That's an executive function. That's done by the administration. Uh, when the parking meter contract was negotiated and submitted to council for approval with the enabling legislation. Uh, I do believe there was an emergency certificate, but council decided not to pass it that night uh, because I believe that we had just received it on Wednesday. I reviewed it um, within the contract itself. It stated that proposals, that th this proposal had been accepted or that the bid had been accepted by the city. Uh, council was under the impression, I was under the impression reviewing the contract that this had been bid and that standard parking uh, had, or central parking had submitted the bid that had been accepted by the administration. Um, after the first reading, you know, we looked into that and I re specifically requested the before the second reading uh, from my Mrs. Craig and I had discussed it with Mrs. Evans. Um, Mrs. Craig wrote a letter to Ryan McGowan uh, regarding that we wanted copies of the bids, the analysis of the bid and why it was awarded to Central Parking. Um, the next morning, the day of council meeting on Thursday, I forget, it's probably about three weeks ago, um, it was determined that this contract had not been bid in accordance with the amendment to the administrative code uh, that this council had adopted all professional services contracts in excess of $10,000 must go to public bid. Uh, it was determined at that point that we would table the legislation uh, and there's two pieces of legislation. One is the award of the contract to central parking. And the second is to establish the meter rates um, and, the, and the citation for violations. Both of those were tabled. Uh, the mayor has stated that the contract would then be submitted for bid. Um, that's the province of Mr. McGowan, the business administrator, or the solicitor's department to submit that for bid. Um, it's my understanding that from what I understand that the bids are currently, or the bid specifications are currently being drafted for the m management contract of the parking meters to be bid. And that's why both the um, ordinance for the award of the contract is tabled um, and until that is bid and a new piece of legislation will come down then that will be withdrawn because if central parking would be the successful bid of the second time around if this legislation is defeated it could not be put back a new ordinance could not be introduced for the same purpose within this year so that's why these are on the table. Um, hopefully by the next meeting, the bid specifications uh, will be submitted and will be advertised for a public bid for the award of the management of the parking meter contract. Um, one other thing I'd like to state, and I forget what speaker it was, um, Mr. Washoe has nothing to do with the parking meters. 
Um, he is solely with the garages, has nothing to do with the parking meters. That's not his province. Um, secondly, the reports that, and I've been on vacation, but I didn't read everything that was in the paper regarding the parking authority and the revenue. There is a difference between <coughs> the budget and the revenues that central parking has for the garages and that which the Scranton Parking Authority had. Um, the Scranton Parking Authority in 2012, I believe they received $565,000 from the city of Scranton um, as, <coughs> as an allocation for the parking meter personnel. Now with six people, that came to over 90000 a year, uh, which, of course, they didn't have. Uh, I mean, that, that is not their salaries and their benefits. When you take what their salaries and benefits were, the rest of the money was to go for expenses, but I believe that we've never received an accounting. That's one thing we wanted from the parking authority. So that what the parking authority received, they, in, in effect, are being subsidized for other salaries by that $562,000. I have no idea what it was for the parking meter people. Uh, I think that their probably salaries and benefits, just a rough calculation, would probably have been around $350,000. Uh, so the rest of that money would have gone to the parking authority. Uh, plus the parking authority also received 10% of all the revenues generated from the uh, parking meters. Uh, in, in 2012, that was a little bit over $900,000, so that would be another $90,000. So when you put that in, that's money that central parking does not have. And from a budget analysis standpoint, you're really not comparing revenues of the parking authority with central parking. It, it's a little bit more than comparing apples and oranges. But I just wanted to get that straight and get that out uh, so that there, there, there is a difference on that. Council has any questions? I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, and uh, Mrs. Crake, I'm I'm sorry. I apologize. I, if we could scrap the letter to Mr. Washo, uh, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. That was my mistake, as I, I I realize now that he doesn't have anything to do with the parking meters. It's just the garages. Okay, Mrs. Craig. 5B, accepting a donation of $100 from Anthracite Heritage Museum and Iron Furnaces Association presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be moved into its proper committee. So moved. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth Order, 6A, reading by title, File of Council Number 8, 2013, an ordinance establishing a no parking zone along the easterly side of Wyoming Avenue, State Route 3025, from Segment 30, Offset 2190, to Segment 30, Offset 2410, and along the southerly curb line of Large Street, 175 feet east from its intersection with Wyoming Avenue to allow for safe site distances for a proposed McDonald's restaurant at Wyoming Avenue and Large Street. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, no business at this time. There's no other business at this time. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>